Welcome to the second video of our Statistics Made Easy series. Today we will talk about measures of central tendency and dispersion, something that we have learned while we were in school. So what do we mean by central tendency? Well, it's a way to describe the center of a data set, the tendency of the data units to move closer to the center. It is also known as a measure of location. It indicates the central value for a probability distribution. Well, let's not worry about probability distribution now because we will have a separate video in details where we will talk about different types of distributions. Measures of central tendency are a part of descriptive statistics and there are three popular measures of central tendency. First one is the mean, denoted by the symbol mu, which is the population mean and also known as the arithmetic average. It is calculated as the sum of the values of data points divided by the number of data points. Let's look at an example. 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. Some of these 5 numbers is 15. So 15 divided by 5 is 3. The mean of these 5 data points is 3. The good thing is that we can use it for both continuous and discrete numeric data. Disadvantage is it cannot be used for qualitative data and it is heavily influenced by outliers. When I say heavily influenced by outliers, let's take a look at an example here very quickly. The salary of five employees in a XYZ company including the CEO. Assume that the individual annual salaries of four of these employees is $100,000 each and the fifth employee who is the CEO of the company is at $2 million. So the mean salary of these five employees would be $480,000. See this is, does not even match with anyone, not even close. You got it by now, I'm sure. The outlier value of $2 million is causing this mess. The mean is getting exaggerated due to this value. Now, let's look at the second measure of central tendency, the median. Median is the middle value in a data set. If we have odd number of data points, we straight away get the middle value. However, if the number of data points is even, then median is the average of the two middle values. As you can see in both of these examples, median is less affected by outliers. The third measure of central tendency is the mode, the most commonly or frequently occurring value. Example 1 here clearly indicates that the mode is 7. Example 2 indicates 2 modes. Is that possible? Yes, it is possible and that is why we use terms like unimodal and bimodal or multimodal data set. Mode applies to both numerical and categorical data. Good thing. However, it does not reflect the center of the distribution very well and it is a point which we should remember. Let's look at dispersion now. Dispersion relates to how stretched or squeezed a data distribution is, hence also known as a measure of spread. These are again a part of descriptive statistics. The first measure of dispersion would be range, difference between the largest and the smallest value in a data set. So the range here would be the difference between 12 and 3, that is 9. Second measure is the interquartile range, abbreviated as IQR. It is based on dividing a data set into quartiles. Quartiles divide a data set into four equal parts. Values dividing each part are called the first, second, and third quartiles and denoted by Q1, Q2, and Q3 respectively. Q1 indicates the middle value in the first half of the data set. Q2 is the median value and Q3 is the middle value in the second half of the data set. IQR is equal to the difference between Q3 and Q1, that is Q3 minus Q1 is the interquartile range. The third measure of dispersion is a standard deviation, probably the most talked about topic in statistics, quality control and process excellence. Let's uncover the myth today related to standard deviation. Standard deviation indicates how spread out our data set is from its mean. Mathematically, it is the square root of variance. Let's look at an example here to understand it better. The first column indicates the individual data points, the mean of which is 4. Second column is the square of the distance of each data point from the mean, the population mean, that is x minus mu whole square. Total number of data points is n. 
So the standard deviation going by the formula root over summation of x minus mu whole square divided by n is equal to 1.60. If we calculate the sample standard deviation, there is a slight change in the formula. Mu here becomes x bar for a sample and n becomes n minus 1. This change from n to n minus 1 is called Bessel's correction statistics. Now the last measure of this portion is variance. It indicates how widely individuals in a group vary. Mathematically it's the square of standard deviation. Going by the adjacent example the variance will be the square of 1.60. Let's quickly look at this small graph here. We will come across this curve a lot in our future videos. Statistically all data points come under this curve and the units on the x-axis indicate how far the data points are from the mean of x bar. Is it one standard deviation, two standard deviation or three standard deviation apart from the mean? I hope you understand the concepts of central tendency and dispersion now. So finally let's check our understanding. I have this small data set available for you. Please take your time once you complete watching this video and try to calculate the values for mean, median, mode, range, standard deviation, and variance. I have also given, a, given you a link here. If you want to check whether your answers are correct, you can go to this particular link and you will find the solution there. Good luck for this exercise. And finally, before we conclude this video, let me thank you once again for your time to watch this video. I would be eager to receive your feedback, suggestions and requests for on-demand videos. If you have any topic in mind about which you want to know more, please do let me know either by posting your comments or connect with me on LinkedIn. I will make sure that I answer your queries and make more videos based on your requirements. Thank you once again. Have a blessed day. Cheers.